Right now we get to put everything together. This up to this point, this next section is probably the most important for us. Uh, because if you, if you consider the pattern what we've done, we did like an introduction of numbers, then we did addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, order of operations. Order of operations was the big one for us, and that's what we're going to do for the rest of our day today. We're going to revisit order of operations, but as we have it with negative numbers. So we're keeping track, we're on 2.5, we're going to do order of operations today. Hey, by the way, what were the order of operations? What's the first one we have? Please. <laughs> First one's please. Next one's excuse. Next Sure. Yeah. Those go together from left to right. Yeah. That's the That's how we get that PEMDOS. Your gang right there. Oh, did I tell you guys that story? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's my math gang. You know. Yeah, that's all people that too. Did you really? Yeah. Did they laugh? I don't like the funniest joke I've heard from a teacher. My brother laughed. <laughs> no, it's funny. The different, different classes get kind of different jokes. And when you get to statistics, that's the class that we have, I think. It's a, it's a harder class. It's a hard. It's not just pure math. Like, this is just, you have numbers, right? Yeah. And you just do the numbers. In stats, it's like one big word problem. That's all the problems are, it's a word problem. So it makes it a little bit more difficult. But man, it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun in that class. If you're curious about what statistics are, go on the videos and watch some of those lessons. And you can probably pick up on it. It's not hard. It's not, not too much harder. It's more critical thinking, I guess. Oh, okay. So... Anyway, yeah, we have, I think a lot of my classes have, have fun. We have different jokes in there, so. So you get new jokes if you take me again in Math C. You'll get fresh ones. <laughs> new material. <laughs> new material. All right. So we're doing the order of operations. It's the same stuff. Same exact order of operations. We just have to be good at applying them to positive and negative numbers together now. So we're still looking for parentheses. No problem. We're still looking for exponents after that, multiplication and division from left to right, whichever one occurs first, and then finally addition subtraction from left to right, whichever one occurs first. With that in mind, let's go ahead and review a couple things before we go any further. This was a big one. We, some people struggled on this last time. Uh, so I need to make sure you've conquered this problem first. Little review. on that. Let's look at the first one. Negative 7 in parentheses squared. In this case, ladies and gentlemen, is this going to be 49 or negative 49? Negative 49. I heard two, oh, I heard people say both. Let's think about it more. Is the negative in the parentheses or not? Yes. That means it's being squared. What's a negative times itself? So then this is going to be a positive 49. Oh, okay. So the exponent has to be a negative, right? If, no. It depends on where, if you have parentheses or not, okay? And we covered this last time. If you're, if you're struggling this, go watch that video again because I explained it a couple times in that. Uh, but basically, here's what this says. Parentheses means the negative is included and being squared. No parentheses means it's not included and not being squared. So here's what this says to you. Watch carefully if you didn't get the first time. This says negative 7 times negative 7. That's what that one says. This one, look at the, the negative is not in the parentheses. This says negative 7 times 7. There's the difference. 
If the negative is not in the parentheses, it does not go along with both numbers. It's just out front. I'll say that again because some of you were not paying attention to that. If the negative is not in the parentheses, it means it's not going along with both numbers. It's just out front. It's taking the opposite of whatever you get next. So in our case, this one's going to be positive 49. What are we going to get on this one? Negative. That's right. Why did they have to make this so like That's math, buddy. It's just, it's just the way we, we go about the order of operations in this one. Um, unfortunately, I, I guess it can look a little confusing once you, until you're used to it. But that's like everything, right? I mean, when you were learning to read, man, reading's hard because you, you don't know what those letters go together as. But once you really get it down, it goes very quickly and very easily. And once you get this down, just like reading, you're going to be able to fly through this stuff and go, oh, yeah, that makes sense now. Is that, are you with it on that? You learn a new vocabulary word. This is like a vocabulary word for math. Just a new rule. Okay, next one, last one. Uh, should I square first or multiply first? Square. square. Definitely. That means I'm going to have 2 times... 64. Good, not 16, right? Uh, no. Not 16. Remember, it's 8 times 8. And that's going to give us the 128 we want. I want to make sure you can do some. So I wasn't going to do this, but I want to see that you can do it. Uh, I'm going to put up three problems on the board. Just go through real quickly and make sure you get the right answers here. Let's do this one. There you And I can check it, check and see if you get this with just one question. Actually, is this one positive or negative? Negative. That's to be negative. That's right. So this, what, what this means, that negative is not in parentheses. It is not going with the two. It just says the opposite of two times two times two times two. That's what that one says. Uh, if you want to think about it mathematically, I gave this to you last time. You don't need to write like this, but you could split this up as negative one times two to the fourth. And what that says is opposite of 2 to the 4th. This one you can't do that. The negative is with that 2. It's going along with it. So here we're going to have negative. Sixteen. The next one we have negative 2 times itself 4 times. For positive 16. That was 2 to the 5th. Would it still be uh, negative? Two to the fifth is interesting, right? Because if you have negative two to the fifth in either case, they do say different things, but you're going to get the same answer. So for instance, if you had negative two to the fifth and negative two to the fifth, do you see that this one says negative two times two times two times two times two? Yeah, five times. That's going to be negative 32. Right. This one says negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times five times. You have the extra negative, that's going to still give you a negative. So in this case, mathematically, yeah, they are different things. They mean different things, but your answer is going to be the same. For the even ones, they mean different things, just like this means different things, but you're going to get different answers. Are you clear on the difference here? Do you see that? So you just, you know you have uh, to the fifth, it's an odd number, so you know it stay odd. Yeah. If it's odd number, that means you have an odd number of negatives, right? Yeah, all right. Okay, so here we have also 4 times 36. Hopefully you got that one. What is 4 times 36? 
Yeah. How many people got all three of those right? Beautiful. Good job. Now, for the rest of our day, we're just gonna we're basically gonna practice. Uh, we're gonna start off nice and simple with some basic problems. I'll gradually build them up until they look harder and harder. They're not gonna be harder and harder. You're gonna start realizing that this math stuff, it's really problems within problems, just one steppers at a time. Even though they might look like this long, if you just keep on going step by step, it's a little stuff that we've learned. So that's gonna be kind of nice about it. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and start building some of these problems up. You ready for it? Um, yeah. Sure. All right. I need to refresh your memory that division acts as a parenthesis in itself. So when you get a problem like this, remember we had these fractions before, you do the numerator first and you do the denominator independently if you have anything to do there, and then you do the division problem after that. So when we look at this problem, firstly, just by counting the number of signs, could you tell me if that's going to be a positive or a negative? Positive. Negative. 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 Three. three. Yeah, let's see what happens. On this problem, order of operations tells us to do parentheses first. Now, I know it's a little confusing because there's not parentheses. What it means is there's a parentheses right there. It's implied. It says that division makes a parentheses right around the numerator. So what we're going to do is do this part first. How much is negative 8 times negative 4, ladies and gentlemen? 32. They say, say like positive 32 positive or negative 32. 32. So what are we at? Positive 32. So we got positive 32 over negative 2. Do, are you okay on the positive 32? How much is positive 32 divided by negative 2? Very good. Division rule or the multiplication rule applied to division. Good to go. So as long as we go step by step, we get these things down. Let's try one more together. I'll give you a couple of you on your own and we'll continue. All right, folks, which one should we do first? What, should, what part? Bottom. 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 How much are we going to get out of that? Negative 12. Thank you. So negative 12 stays the same. This becomes negative 12. Oh, OK. We have negative 12 over negative 12. How much is negative 12 over negative 12? One. Yeah. Positive one or negative one? Positive. 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 It's too good. Negative. Very good. Give a couple of these a try. Yeah, there, there is. We have the order of operations that says parentheses first. Now, the thing I was just talking about was, in this problem, when you're doing this, division acts as its own parentheses for a fraction. So what this really means is there's parentheses here. And here. It says do that first and then go ahead and do the division. That's what that means to do. A good question. Let's go ahead and do a couple more on your own. 